Good morning, this is totally random. Featuring Franz Baruna and Andrew Embler. Uh, this is going to be another short, totally short show. Totally short, random. I mean, I, I just say paced, appropriately paced, totally random. So, uh, if you have questions for us, uh, if you have something you would like us to give you an answer on, you should start thinking about those now and put them in the chat. You should put them in the chat room because we're gonna push through what we got here and get back to work. Uh, first. I would like to thank again, we mentioned last week it was going to happen, but it did happen. Thank you to everyone who did the cool CMS showdown comparison demo and mega panel uh, in Milwaukee. Uh, so Trivera Guy and Trivera Girl, RMX Dave, Jessica Dunbar, of course. Thank you all so much. Uh, there's a post in Chit Chat about it. Uh, looks like it went really well. Uh, apparently they demoed Concrete 5 after some proprietary CMS that was painful to look at and uh, people seemed uh, happy and excited and uh, also there were stickers and you know people love stickers. People love stickers. Everyone loves stickers. If you don't love stickers, I don't know. Damn, that's great. What can I do with you? Uh, so that is cool and thank you Super again. Cool. Some fun stuff is coming to you guys. Uh, who made that happen, and anyone else who wants to make something like happen, there's an opportunity in your hometown to uh, help educate people about the awesomeness and potential of Concrete 5. We strongly encourage you to do so, we're happy to help you in any way that we can. Uh, in other news, over 95,000 sites have connected to the community as project pages. Yeah, awesome. Over 95, so we're like almost at 100. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Totally. Uh, we believe through watching the hit counter on the update script that the actual number of Concrete 5 sites that are out there is a lot closer to a quarter of a million, but at least the better part of 100,000 of them have actually connected as a project page, so cool. Yeah, totally. Uh, are there some Karma picks that we want to look at? Yeah, we got, picks? we got one from Adajad, and I'll bring that up right now. Oh, wow. Looks like they have gone over the top. They have a vending, vending machine. machine that serves up concrete five sites. <laughs> and it's process. my latest venture. It's a white labeling. White labeling. Oh, wow. There's the concrete five server. I'll just cover this air vent. <laughs> Yonk. <laughs> nice, Ooh, nice. On the door. This is fantastic. Very cool. That's super cool. Thank you. All right. That room needs a little spicing up, I think. I think, the, I, I think the sticker is an improvement. Give it a high five for all. Yep. Uh, did the car machine run yet, or are we still too early? Let's find out. Let's check it out. Car machine. We learn. We check it out together. Let's find out. Weekly winners. Yay. Yeah, it works. So, what is that? It's. I can't read it from here. It's Mike Fatty. You want a copy of the discussion forums? Cool. We got, uh, for promotion, Jessica Dunbar. She helped do the meetup in oh, Milwaukee. Yeah. She got a copy of the Flash Gallery. Great job, Jessica. And Christian B. has been doing a lot of work in uh, GitHub, so he got a copy of the contact directory. Indeed. Nice. Sweet. Good work, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, PRB. We have an intro for the PRB, right? PRB intro time. Intro time. Sure is. Mark that up. And now it's time for the Peer Review Ball. Featuring new themes and add-ons. I love it. Sweet. So, uh, had some people going through the PRB and commenting and proving the occasional thing. Uh, still generally shooting for things to try to be 5-5 five, five ready in there. So, probably hasn't had the, uh, the frenetic energy from everyone that normally it would. We're all spread pretty thin, but we get we got some things approved this week, right? Yeah, we ju well, and we just added five five zero as a inter or as a uh, version drop down option for your oh, add-ons. Right. So so now at this point, uh, that whole bit we talked about last time, where you're going to need to go in and update your add-ons to make it serve to five five. Uh, you can do that. You now. can do that. And you want to because uh, as we've been testing 5.5 and stuff, we're actually putting a message on all those beautiful uh, 
inline add-on and theme pages uh, that you, know, you can buy right from your own site now. There's not a big pink message saying, yeah, this doesn't have a version for your site, so don't buy it. And it won't let you currently. Yeah, you don't want um, that. Yeah, so, so we're... Go ahead and make yeah. your stuff work with 5.5. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we did approve a few things. We approved a couple things this week. Uh, the first is an add-on for e-commerce. This is uh, Canada Post Shipping. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, so this is a shipping add-on that will work uh, for shipping to Canada. Cool. Looks like it's got a few uh, options for that stuff. I'm not totally sure how deep it goes. Um, well, it's from Todd Crow, who has some other extensions oh, yeah. for e-commerce. I know it's going to come with great support. Yeah, there it is. There it is. So if you need that, and you would know if you do, that's going to that'll help you out. Sweet. Uh, then we've got a, a, a theme by the core team. Holiday yogurt. I think first this theme is the ever. correct. The first, yeah. the first theme we've ever released in the marketplace. It is. It's a free theme for the holidays. Right. Get it while the getting's good. And uh, it's a really nice looking theme. Yeah. I like it. A it's lot. very seasonal, but non-denominational. <laughs> That's right. Festive. Fest Festivus? Festivus. Festivus Please. theme. <laughs> Best of us, you. So enjoy that. Yeah, so uh, go in and there. Uh, I just updated that to serve to 5.5 sites after verifying that it did, in fact, work on 5.5. Great. And, uh, and there you go. And I did the same with Logo Creator, which is uh, the final item that we uh, approved this week. This is an add-on that will let you build a logo right from your Concrete 5 site. So you can oh, wow. choose colors, um, uh, text. Um, I think it pulls the fonts in from Google Fonts oh, or something cool. like that. And it will just uh, it'll build you some images and spit out like a, spit out a logo. Well, that's handy. Yeah. People are going to like that. You would be uh, shocked to see how, how many websites are really DIY, uh, set it up with simple scripts on Bluehost, and uh, uh, would be very eager to have a tool like this at, at their disposal. Uh, certainly there's plenty of big enterprise, serve 70 million pages a month type websites as well, but uh, you know, we never intended Concrete 5 to be, to compete with like uh, Homestead or, yeah. or Weebly, but uh, people people use it that way. So yeah, this, this I think will go well. And I think developers who target their their add-ons in the like for small things that can be easily understood by site owners who don't necessarily have a technical bent do pretty well for themselves. Yeah. So like custom, you know, self-contained widgets that don't require a lot of like you see the idea logo creator, you see one screenshot there, you get what that. Does. You get it, and chances are uh, that may lead to any. Uh, any amount of, of services work for Windhack. Windhack. I can see people saying that was great. I'd love it if it had a little umbrella. Yeah. I mean, my yeah, totally. It's a tech logo. So yeah, it's a great way to good think. Uh, how would we do that? We got an intro for this too. Let's fire it up. How would we do that? How would we do that? Well, we're going to look at the chat room here in a second, but there's one site that I saw on Twitter that was built with Concrete 5 that I wanted to look at just because, well, you'll see. Let's look at that one. Mmm. It's pretty. Oh, yeah. And delicious. Not sure we would do it. We'd just eat it. Yeah. yeah we would. So this is a Concrete 5 site? Yeah, it is. Nice. Yeah, it does. I could see that. I think the, uh, it looks like that. The first man. Muffins are nice, but that next one with the chaturie. Come on. Give me that salami. Mm, oh, that yeah. That looks good. Mm-hmm. I like it's not bad. <laughs> a man oh. eating food. <laughs> uh, all right, well, you know, you have Serious. a slider, you get some block areas on the home page. Um, this is just a really pretty site with great content in it. There's nothing that is going to uh, take a CS degree to build. Yeah, I think that that at, uh, slider at the top looks like it's the Nevo slider. Um, mm -hmm at least in terms of which library they're using. And we have a number of add-ons that I think use that library. So if you look for image ga in, in image galleries or, or for slider, you'll find that exact add-on in our marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, those drop-downs, well, they don't look like it. Um, so you can build that with an auto-nav that's a custom template, uh, either in a scrapbook or hard-coded into a theme or into page defaults. I'd probably hard-code it. A stack. A stack, thank you. No more any scrapbooks. Yeah, no more scrapbooks in 5.5. In five, five. So you could use a you could use a scrapbook, you could use a global area in 5.5, five, which is a, a good way to go. Um, There's a background image exciting. in the page, which is kind of cool. We were just dealing with this with our own yeah. Welcome Wizard stuff. Uh, so that, that faded muffins pick kind of changes from page to page. It could be something else somewhere else. Uh, so instead of kind of hard coding that into a yeah. theme file, what we would probably do is make a custom attribute uh, for the property section of the page. 
uh, that you could pick an image with, and then that would throw that into the, the background space. Yeah, that would and you change it via the page properties mm -hmm. uh, overlay, it and works, then uh, works well. and then it would just be reflected in your template. Um, if you go back to one of the recipes, or I think it was like a few pages back, maybe menu. This page looks kind of soon. oh. There's one that had like two bags. I'm hungry. It had a layout, or it looked like it had a layout. No, maybe it's yeah. about the page with the muffins. On yeah, it. this yeah. guy it looks like it's. It, oh, yeah, it's got pull a pull quote. quote yeah. and some, so is that an image or is that text? That pull quote. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like this would be some kind of block quote. I mean, you could uh, you could do this a couple different ways. Um, you could add. Hmm, how would we do this? I would probably I would use, use it with layouts because yeah, I wouldn't layout. want to bother you. So I would yeah. I would assume that we would have like a main content space that that spanned the whole width of that paragraph. Yeah. So you know the about bigger than off that whole kind of width. Uh, and then I would just I'd be writing and I'd be like you know what I really need to do here is a pull quote and maybe an inline image. The inline image you could just do in Tiny MCE by floating it left the one down there with the. Whatever, it was like some type of casserole thing happened. Yeah. Uh, and that pull quote, I'd be like, oh, this is a downer. Uh, and so you would actually chop the layout, uh, or chop the one block area into uh, maybe even a three column so you could get that spacing between the paragraph yeah. and the pull quote right. And then I would just have a designer give me the little pretty line on the top and the pretty line on the bottom as images and uh, create another content block for that pull quote, just style the text in there. Yeah, and I think there's a free block quote add-on, which is, you know, I mean, I mean, all it does is do exactly what you just said, right, but it makes it less likely yeah. to have tiny MC screw it up. So. Yeah, so I mean, if you're going to do this a lot, there's different, you could yeah. use the, the uh, Jordan's um, yeah. content block. Look, there's a fly right there. Nope. No. Uh... So yeah, uh, yeah that's how I, I like that. that Definitely, it's a good example Pretty of why easy. layouts are. Nice yeah, because not like you're gonna do this all the time. Well, and you, you know, want to over engineer keep a solution. it. You, you don't want to necessarily make your block quotes always flow left. You know, you might want them to just be right or always be up in the first paragraph yeah. or whatever. So layouts yeah. gives you. It's a little bit painful to be yeah, trying to move it to around it. in a content block is a real. Yeah, it's kind of a, kind a little of a painful. Thing. You're gonna have to like chop that text into a couple of content blocks, but certainly. Uh, not as painful as you know, paying a developer to make a new template for you. Totally. So that's how we would do that. So what uh, what do we have in the in the world of questions that we can chat about here before we get back to work? We got a uh, question from Jay Steel One Twenty Three. He asks, "Is there a link uh, or some sort of resource that we have that outlines changes that need to happen for themes and add-ons in Five Five? Uh, we are working on that. We resource. are working so on it. It's going to be a little document that." Um, Mostly talks about interface, so what your buttons should be labeled and that kind of thing. So yeah, there we started this when we were doing the five five alpha push and gave it to the people who were working on that. And I think a few things have matured since then, new additions to it. Mm -hmm. So we need to update that. But once it's pretty dialed in and we're sure that nothing major is going to change, which I think we're pretty sure at this point, um, we just have to write it up. I've got a draft of it and you just go over to Robert so you can make it look pretty. Um, that should happen later today. And then we already added five, uh, five as the um, as a variable that you can assign now in the PRB. And uh, I think we're looking at next Wednesday as the final date where we will push a version up to uh, to our own downloads page that is fully encapsulated. Bill, we're going to call that five five zero, and encourage people who are building new concrete five sites to start with that. Yep, we'll do the you know, latest release. release and last stable release kind of approach. So. Next Wednesday. All right, we got a question from Growth Kerr. He'd like to know uh, what are some common things that developers need to fix up after they've submitted something to the uh, the PRV. Um, few things. If they're themes, you want to make sure that the we we've actually added we've changed around a lot with regards to styling in five five. So it's possible that if your theme didn't conflict with. Uh, if your theme didn't conflict with styles before, like button styles or you know overlays or whatever, it's possible that it could now. So you're gonna want to make sure that your theme still, that the Concrete Five toolbar and menus and widgets and stuff like that still look good in your theme. Um, for add-on developers, you know you're gonna want to make sure your blocks look good. The blocks should mostly look mostly look acceptable. You want to make sure that if your block relies on JavaScript or CSS. Um, in the page <clears throat> to render the view, uh, and if it, especially if it relied on a dialogue class 
or jQuery or anything like that, you want to make sure that that still works because we've actually taken a whole bunch of files that used to uh, be separate files uh, and combine them into one so that we can minify JavaScript and make it load a lot faster. So that usually doesn't take a lot, but you just want to make sure that it still works. Um, and then finally, uh, dashboard pages are probably going to be the biggest bears. You're going to want to see if your dashboard page looks acceptable. We try and put some love into backward compatibility so stuff doesn't look just nightmarishly unstyled. But uh, there are a lot of things that we're not preserving. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of table styles that might look a little funky until they're updated or... Uh, you know, button styles, etc. Yeah. And uh, there's some labeling stuff, you know, buttons should be labeled save, not update, things like that. So, uh, yeah, and stuff. the probably one of the things that add on developers with dashboard views are going to need to do to make their stuff look the best is uh, if you look at any of the dashboard pages in 5.5 in the core, you'll see that there's a special function that outputs the header and footer for those pages inside the view. And that's the bit that is responsible for adding the star to make the page a favorite, um, adding help if there's help, um, just making it look nice. And uh, this will be part of the style guide that Franz was talking about, but you can get a jump on it by just checking about how we build our pages. Um, we generally are no longer having more than one sort of bubbly view uh, window on a page. Now. Yes. Um, so in bef before we used to have lots of them, you know, no. and we're not doing that anymore. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, it'll still work, but it'll look out of place when you have three weird windows on a page when it looks much better, which is one. Yeah. So you'll, you're going to want to try and consolidate those options inside one or make three pages for them. Yep. yep. So well, we will three. review all of our notes and we'll have Robert make it a little pretty info diagram. In PDF somewhere. Nice. How to make your stuff look good in 5.5. Five, five. Sweet. Next. Okay, we have a question from Corbin Zento. He wants to know, uh, have we been playing with Node.js at all? No, it's not really something that, you know, we're pretty locked into PHP. I could see us using something like that for our own site for certain things, but we haven't had a chance to play with it cool though for solving the right problems all right we got a question from shadow of computers he has a distributed network where they're going to have a master server that sends files and data to slave servers and it looks like the slave servers will get the same content from the master server so when it comes to maintaining concrete five all changes would need to be made on the master uh, how would you do that with concrete five oh we're we talking databases or files or both so that's content and data using one domain uh, served from multiple servers. I mean, generally, there's a couple of ways to think about this problem, right? You can have a load balancer that is going to distribute your, um, your Apache load across different web servers. So they're going to need copies of the files and copies of Apache running. Uh, or you can, and or you can have a master slave database set up, which is going to distribute your, your, your database load yeah. across different servers. Uh, you don't have to do both, uh, and there's probably different reasons to approach them in different ways. Are you, are you doing both? What's the... Our experience in the abstract has been that uh, slave MySQL databases don't always uh, equal performance gain unless you really put some thought mm -hmm. into it. Uh, certainly if you have like a specific case where you're like, look, I'm, I, you know, I'm building this huge stats table, for example, and it's easy to do writes to it, but I don't want to do, I mean, I need to do real-time querying against it, but I don't want to do real-time querying against this huge table on the same server that I'm yeah. running. Okay. That, you know, obviously you could set up a slave database and have that be your reporting server and that would be a, a bright way to go. Yeah, like I would say... I probably set it up so that there are, if you if you needed slaves, I would say that you would want to only use that setup uh, if you were really if your site was really read only, you know. I mean, except for the editing part. So what you would do is you would enforce editing at one domain. So mm -hmm. you know whatever dot domain dot com and say you have to edit there because that's where the master copy of the database lives and when you make changes there it's going to propagate out to the slaves on all your load balanced servers and then uh, when you're viewing any of the when you're actually viewing the website and you're being bounced around between these different um, between these different machines 
Um, if you're doing read only, you know, you can read from the slave and it'll be fine. But we had a, a project where we tried to have master slave configuration and then it had a lot of read write as well. So when you, it would try to read from a slave, but the moment it encountered a write query, it would switch to the master. And while it worked, like the hijinks you had to jump through to, you know, to, to make that work made it didn't give you any yeah. performance better. Now, on the flip side, uh, if you just have a lot of traffic coming in, it's mostly read, then it probably makes sense to have uh, a really beefy database server, single one. Yeah. Uh, and then, a, 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 I don't know, however many you need, but, you know, up to half a dozen uh, Apache servers behind a load balancer. Uh, and that you can actually do pretty easily. There is a, um, it's not an add-on, it's just a script somewhere that lets you move sessions to database, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just a, it's a how-to now, and it's super easy to move sessions to database. You know, you can set you up an R-Sync. Yeah, yeah you, you will need to do that, um, unless you have a load balancer that will stick you on one server for the entire, once you, like, mm -hmm. make a request, it'll stick you on the server. But I would, I would move the sessions to the database anyway, just because it makes sense, too. Um, and then uh, you'd have a script that would R-Sync files out from the master domain out to the, to the uh, other... To the slaves, or you could do a network mount and stick all your files in one shared location that you can then map to a drive on each box. And Concrete Five can be can serve files from different directories. So, so hopefully that helps. You know, try to move, try to separate the act of, of reading and writing a little bit. Uh, you also kind of want to look at your website and and ask yourself: Is anybody besides the admins creating content? Yeah, right. I'm that thinking makes it a of lot one easier. huge corporate uh, entity that is using Concrete Five to serve the better part of 70 million views a month. Um, they don't like. There's no guest books. There's no contact forms or whatever in their Concrete Five installs. It's all just you know what what could be static content. Yeah. So it's very easy for them to. Yeah, all uh, their interactive bits are custom bits, which then connect to their own databases. So they can sidestep all the concrete stuff. All the is very that is good for their workflow very, as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's something to think about. Uh, I saw one question about what to do if you are an add-on developer and you are going out of town. And that is a very good question. We are, have had a, a few cases of that recently what with the holidays. You're going to want to keep that iPhone by the bed. Keep the iPhone right in front of you uh, so you can support people through that. You know, I, I think we need to add some, some tools to make it easier for you to do a I'm away kind of thing and have it automatically show up in a consistent way on your add-on pages and, and auto-reply. Um, I think probably the, the best thing for you to do right now is just update your add-on descriptions with a little note saying, hey, I'm going to be yeah. out of town from here to there, so feel free to buy this, but heads up, you're not going to get much in the way of support from me until until whenever. And uh, I mean, I guess the reality is if, someone, if, you, if you end up having to get stiffed with some support to uh, refunds on that, you know, we'll, we won't charge you the penalty fee. Um, that's, I think, the yeah. sanest answer that I yeah, came up with totally. today. Um, you got anything else in there, Matt? Yeah, a question from Wagney. Is there a slider add-on that offers a lot of control? Um, it sounds like uh, some look, he's looking for some, some super custom functions, like per pixel accuracy? I don't know. Would imagine so. Yeah, they get pretty deep. There's a lot of them. Yeah, I'd say take a look at the marketplace and uh, see if there's any that that look good to you. There's a lot of them in there. Anything else? Um, yeah, we got a question from J. A. Steele. He'd like to know how come we stopped using Vimeo for our tutorial videos and such. Uh, because you know YouTube has HD now. Uh, yeah, they didn't. Win. They didn't when we started using Vimeo. Uh, YouTube is free. Uh, Vimeo is not. I mean, it's free, but not if you want to use HD on your own site. It actually adds up pretty quickly. Uh, and most importantly, we've consistently had problems with people in Europe and Vimeo. Like 19 seconds in on videos that work fine for us, the audio drops out for them. <laughs> Crazy. And you open a support thread with Vimeo, and they're like, oh. What are you talking about? Like this video here for these people, and yeah, I know that's pretty hard to do. Oh God, right? I can't, like, yeah. you know, send someone to Denmark. Yeah, all uh, right. But whatever, dude. Tracer, you know, I need yeah. people to be able to watch my videos. And YouTube is, I, I believe, pretty popular. Yeah. So that's where they're going for now. I'm gonna probably stick them up on Vimeo as well, but uh, I'm gonna probably stop. I don't know if I'm paying for Vimeo Plus or not anymore. But I think it's a waste of money. I don't need to pay someone so I can embed HD videos on my site if YouTube's gonna give it to me for free. Yeah. You know? Anything else? I think that does it for questions. Cool. Sweet. Well, 
it's time for us to get back to work. Uh, five five is coming along great. We're just kind of tightening up some update buttons, turning into save buttons, and getting news flow to be a consistent height and that kind of stuff. But uh, if you're playing with it, you should be seeing like we're we're starting to play around with actual content for news flow, and the wizards are like getting dialed in and. Yeah. Uh, definitely the uh, not only is the light at the end of the tunnel, but we are emerging from said tunnel. So we're going to get back to it. Thank you, everybody, for all of your help. Thanks again, particularly to uh, Milwaukee and the awesome meetup there. Good job, guys. Nice and uh, let's play our outro. Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific time.